everybody, Jason from No Code V8. In this video, we're going to be looking at Stripe payment links with Zapier. So if you don't know already, Stripe payment links enables you to create a product or service on Stripe and then have a link that you can create that you can then send to your customers, put on your website, share on social media. So when they click on that, it takes them to the product or service and then they can purchase straight from there. So what's new is that they've released a beta version for Zapier that enables you to automatically create that link when the price changes. So we're going to be looking at that. We're also going to be looking at webhooks. So if webhooks is something you heard of or not too familiar with, then we'll look at that. So we're going to use webhooks to get the information from Stripe to send it to Zapier that a price has changed. We're then going to use Zapier to create the payment link. And then we're going to update our website with the new link to the new price. So that's quite a lot to get through. Um, so we'll jump straight in and have a look at that now. OK, before we get started, let's just have a look at the scenario of what we have. So we're in Stripe at the moment and we have a product. So if I click on products, we have a product called Fidgets and you can add products or services. Very easy. Just click on it. Give a name, description, the price, one off payment or reoccurring and then save that away. So we have one already. And if we click on that, we can see we have two prices. So it was 35 and now it's 40 and we can create more prices. You can also create payment links. So if we click on this button here, it will create as a nice URL that we can then use to send to our customers. So what we want to do, we want to be able to create payment links automatically when we add a new price. And we want that link to update our website where we have the information. So if we just have a quick look at this mock-up website, we have a website here. And if we click on buy, we come down here and we can click buy now and we can by fidgets but that link is coded into there so if our price changes when you change the price in stripe you also have to change the payment link create a new payment link so the link we have in our website would be for the old price we want to update it for the new price so this is what we're going to do we're going to use zapier to do that and we're going to use something called short io which is a url shortener to help us do that so let's have a look first of all at how we can create the web hooks to get the information to Zapier. OK, the first thing we need to do then is we need a trigger. We need to send the information to Zapier to tell it to run the automation. So if we just jump into Zapier and we've chosen Stripe as a trigger because this is logical, right? We want to get information from Stripe to trigger this. But when we look at the trigger events, we don't have one for new price created in here. So what we're going to have to do is use a webhook to get Stripe to send the information to Zapier. So let's just jump over across to Stripe and we're going to click on the developers button on the top right here. So some of this can seem quite scary if you've never used webhooks before. I'm not a developer, so it's new to me and I've been through this process of having to try and understand what these are. But all a webhook is is a way for an application to send information to another application. So when you think about Zapier connecting to all these things, it's connected via webhooks, but it just makes it easy for you because you can just pick from Zapier what you want. But in this instance, and in many instances, you will have the situation where there isn't an option for you uh, in Zapier to do what you want. The provider is not giving you that information or that ability to do it. So all the webhook will do is give you a way of sending that information in a custom way. So this is what we're going to do now. So we're going to click on webhooks down here and we can see that I have one already, but we're going to create another one here. So we're going to add an endpoint. And if I click on this here, it's going to ask me for a URL. So Stripe is saying, where should I send this information? So what we can do, we jump back into Zapier. And instead of Stripe as the trigger, we use webhooks by Zapier. And so we can choose an event now. I'm going to choose a catch hook because we want to listen. We're waiting for new information to be sent. So if we click on that and continue, Zapier gives us a URL. So this is a unique URL for us. And we can use it for this automation. So we're going to copy that. So U88F, it ends in. Go back over to Stripe and we're going to paste in and we're going to say send all the information to this URL. Now, 
Stripe at this point will send everything it does and we don't want that. We're just interested in the price created. So we can filter that. So we can just say select events and we can type in here price and we can tick this one. We'll send information when a price is created to this URL. And obviously put descriptions in there when you're doing this live so you've got information because it may be that you have multiples and you'll need to um, understand what they're doing at a later date. So be good to yourself and, um, and, and put as much information as you can in there. So we're going to add endpoint here now. And this is the endpoint. So it's created it. If we go back to webhooks, we will see this top one here is now set up. So when a price is created, it's going to send that information to Zapier to this specific URL. So that's how you set up the webhook for that event. So in the next video, we're going to look at how we can then configure Zapier to take that information and process the automation. OK. OK, so we're back in Zapier now and we're going to have a look at how we can continue to configure the information. So remember, we've got the catch hook at the beginning and we're going to just continue on here. So this is listening for a price change and we have the option to test the trigger. So let's jump back into Stripe and let's just add a price. So we're going to go back to our products. We're going to go to fidgets and we're going to add a new price here. Standard pricing. Uh, let's go for 45 pounds, a one time payment and add the price. So what that should do now, if we go over to developers and look at the uh, events, this will give us all the information here so we can see that a new price was created here and what we should be able to do then is go to Zapier and now test and it should have sent some information to this. So here we are, we have the information here, most of it is not relevant so we have the event ID which if you're tr troubleshooting you know relates to these events in here. and we have various bits of other information we're just going to verify it so it's 45 pounds so this is the one that's just been triggered and so we can continue now so that's working we're catching the information now what we want to do is do a create a payment link for that new price that's just been created so we're going to use stripe again but at the moment it's in beta so we have to choose stripe beta they will roll it into the main one um, once it's out of beta. But for now, let's just click on beta. Um, we're going to create a payment link. There's only one option in there. So we're going to continue and we're going to choose the um, Stripe account that we're working with. And we're going to continue there. And then we're going to choose the price. So it's asking us which price do you want to create this link for? because this is going to be dynamic and it's going to be different every time instead of choosing the price which we can see here we're going to say custom value and we're going to tell it to use the information it got in the step one in the webhook and so it's looking for the price ID which is here so we can just say whatever stripe centers that's the price we want to create the link for now we can do optional things on here let's do this one we can say um, we want to allow promotional codes um, and we want to let's just leave that there collect no address um, everything else the same we could redirect them to your web page after the uh, purchase but let's keep it simple and just click continue and what we should be able to do then is run a test to create that payment link so we're going to test now and it was successful everything's okay and what we can do if we scroll down here we should be able to see the link here that we need and if we head over into stripe as well and we go to payments and we go to payment links we should see one now so this is 45 and we can see a payment link's been created in there so jump back to zapier so that's bits done then so just to clarify we've used the catch hook to catch the web hook that the stripe centers and then we've used the information in that to get the id to create the link okay so that bit's done so let's just go back to setup we don't want to turn that on yet we're not finished 
and so let's look in the next video of how we can then update our website to contain that link so we don't have to keep going in there and changing okay so let's jump in and have a look at that okay so what do we want to do with that payment link we could have something that automatically sends that link to people to a mailing list or something like that with a new price update in this instance we want to just update our website so that we don't have to keep going in there and changing every time we update price so what we can do we have a website here and if I click on buy and we have fidgets and widgets and we have this buy now link here that's going to take us to the page to buy so we're going to use a little trick here and this is something I recommend that you do and this is using URL shorteners so if we hover over this and move myself out the way here but if I hover over this and we look at the bottom left we can see this is a link to link.zensiblesolutions.com slash fidgets so what I'm using there is a URL shortener so I'm not going directly to the Stripe payment link I'm going to a URL shortener so what that means is if we just jump over to short IO so if you're not familiar with short IO or web um, URL shorteners they basically allow you to create a URL with your domain name in and then redirect that to wherever you want so that's useful in this case I'm going to look at why it's also useful if you have URLs that are generated by systems that are you know unreadable really long um, lots of special characters and things like that in there um, but you want to give something readable to people so you can use this then to create any URL you want so we have link.zensiblesolutions.com slash and I can create anything I want so we have one here this is the one we're looking at and we can see that it goes to this URL here that's been provided by Stripe now that's the old URL so what we need to do is update this URL in here so we're going to keep this the same so on our website this is not going to change it's going to go to um, zensiblesolutions.com slash fidgets it's going to send it to here and then in here we're going to change this so this will always stay the same we don't have to change our website we just change where it forwards to and we can do that by using short IO because it works with Zapier so in the next video we're just going to have a look at how we can do that to change that URL to be the new one so let's jump in and look at that now okay so we're back in Zapier now we're going to create a automation to update that URL so we're going to connect to short IO so if you not familiar with short IO um, it's free to use there's a paid version but you can do quite a lot with the free version and this is what we're using here uh, and the good thing is it works with Zapier so it's nice and easy to manage and there's lots of scenarios where you might use this um, and, and in fact it's preferable to give out this kind of URL than anything else because if something changes your website moves or something moves um, or you change a form or something like that you don't have to then email the customers and tell them hey uh, the, the link you have is old now and we can use a new one they retain the same link and we just update it here so the action we want is to update a link and we're going to continue here and we're going to choose account here and we're going to choose this one this is my account continue and what we need to do now is get the ID for the short IO so we're looking for the ID for this here for this link now I'll just do a separate video or a link to a document about how you get that for now I'm just going to paste it in so just know that every link has a unique ID and this is what we want to use now the next bit is okay so we have the link uh, where do you want to redirect it to so what's the URL you're trying to send to so if we click on here then we know that information because we just created the payment link and we can scroll down here like we did previously and we can see this is the link so we're saying update it with a link from step two and we can continue there and and now we can test so let's just check this so it ends in 4001 it currently ends in 8144 so if we test and review now 
So we should go to short IO and update that. So it says it's updated it. And if we just refresh the screen here, just check that we've updated the, the right link. So now we can see it's 4001. And that means if we go back to our website now and refresh this, again, this link is not going to change because it's still pointing to fidgets. But when we click on it, it should redirect us now to the new price. OK, so that's loaded. So we can see it's fidgets now. And we can see we've got the ad promotional code, which we change, and the price is 45. So this matches what we've got in here. And also this here, 45 and 400 for the URL. So that's the process. So just to recap what we've done then, we've been into Stripe. We've added a new payment. We've created a webhook to send all information to do with pricing to Zapier. Zapier is catching it with this very specific um, catch hook. It's then creating the payment using Stripe's beta and then it's updating the short URL in here to point to the new pricing page. So again, even if it's not on your website, if that's a link that you've sent to people or you've published that on Facebook or, or um, wherever you're selling your products and services, then you don't need to then go and revise that. You can just keep the link and just redirect where that's going. So very useful. So yeah, we've covered web hooks, we've covered the, um, the payment link for Stripe, we've covered short IO. And so, yeah, I think that's enough uh, for this lesson. So if you have any questions, as always, let me know. And thank you very much for listening.